Who does God say we are? There are so many voices telling us lies of who we are that after a while we start to believe them and our identity gets lost in the shuffle. So who are we? Join me as we discover just who God says we are. Hello and welcome to another lesson on Who Does God Say We Are? This week we're going to be learning just how important we are to God. See, some of the things that we've been told are lies that revolve around our unimportance. We've been told by evolution that we're a random accident. We've been told by society that we are just a drop in the bucket, merely one part of the whole and easily replaceable. I mean, think about it. If you went to college, you had to be accepted. And as great as it feels to be wanted and needed, if we were unable to attend those classes in the fall, our place would have been given away, filled very quickly by somebody else who wanted to be there. When we enter the workforce, it isn't much different. We have a job, and if we do a good job, then we're a part of the team. But if we fail and we get fired, there is a whole line of people waiting to take our places. Even in marriage, which ideally should be a lifetime commitment, it isn't always. We can be abandoned and replaced fairly easily. Some of us spent their childhood in foster care or our children of divorce where one parent remarried and started a new family. See, most of us have lost friendships throughout our lifetimes or we've been left out of group activities and all of these experiences feed this feeling of unimportance. But from God's perspective, it's all a lie. He sees us as being extremely important. Through his eyes, we see that we are chosen. We are bought at a very high price. And we're known deeply and completely. When we're kids, a lot of games that we play, we would have to pick teams. And as we stood there waiting for our names to be called, there was this feeling of excitement and dread all rolled into one. To be picked first was a great feeling. To be picked last, not so much. Well, here's some good news. God picked us first. Ephesians 1, 4 through 5 says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. See, not only did God choose us before he finished creating the universe, but he did it because it gave him great pleasure. We aren't Christians by default because God couldn't get someone better to fill our place. It's his great pleasure to call us his children. Let that sink in. God looks down from heaven and he smiles when he thinks of us. He's proud to say that we belong to him. He knew we were going to be born at the moment exactly when we were, just where we were. He knew where we would travel and whom we would meet. And he chose us to belong to him. Not only did he choose us, but he bought us. And our lives weren't in the dollar discount bin. The cost of our eternal soul was infinitely expensive. Ephesians 1, 6-8 gives us a glimpse at the cost that he paid for us. It says, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with wisdom and understanding. In these verses, Jesus is described as the one God loves. That's the price he paid for us. As a mom, I think of my children, and and I just can't wrap my brain around the kind of love that it would take to pour out their blood to save a humanity that had turned its back on me and denied my very existence. But 
that's just what God did because that's how important we are to him. He paid more than the ultimate price for us. And that's why Matthew Henry once said, the body is for the Lord. It's to be an instrument of righteousness to holiness and therefore is never to be made an instrument of sin. May we make it our business to the latest day and hour of our lives to glorify God with our bodies and with our spirits, which are his. He chose us and he bought us and that makes us valuable. Since we're so valuable to God, we should never think that we're just part of this faceless mob of believers. God didn't save us so that he could have another notch on his belt or up his like count. The Bible tells us that God knows us completely and intimately. God tells Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1.5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I love that verse because it talks about us being specifically made for a specific purpose. But we're going to talk about that more in our last video in this series. So for today, I just want it to sink in that God knew us and our potential long before we were born. And he continues to know us. He continues to watch over and be invested in our lives. Psalms 139, 1 through 4 says, O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, Lord. That's how important we are to God. We are chosen. He picked us first. He bought us at a very high price. And we are known by God completely and intimately. So let's live like it. Thank you for watching today. I hope that you've been encouraged. There are free worksheets that go with this lesson as well as the previous two lessons and their worksheets available at hebrews4ministries.com. You can find them under the weekly inspirations tab. Once again, my name is Kegan Harkins and it's been great spending some time with you today. From all of us here at Hebrews 4 Ministries, thanks for watching and have a truly blessed day. <music>